Uh, my mate Charlie is an Arsenal fan. He's just uh, texted me. You slating the Arsenal again? Yep. We are back. What, back in fourth place, mate? Yeah, good luck with that. Brilliant. <laughs> Can't wait to see you in the Champions League uh, next year. Because uh, they've won it so many times, haven't they? Champions League. Exactly. I'll just remind all Arsenal fans, Chelsea, the first ever London club to win the Champions League. And they only went and did it again. <sighs> and you got nowhere near them. Listen, next season, Arsenal aren't going to be out of Europe. They are going to be expected to do a lot of things. It's all oh, it's all new. We're back in the top four. Isn't Arteta great? You wait till next season when it all starts catching up with him. You ain't got a plan to deal with it. All the games and all the expectation. And then you'll start moaning. I guarantee you'll all be right on his back. Get him out. Get Wenger back. Unai Emery wasn't that bad. Dear, oh dear. Uh, Alex is an Arsenal fan. What do you want to say, Alex? All right, guys. Great show as always. Thank Thanks you, mate. It. I agree. Um, just, uh, just a couple of points, really. Why can't we just enjoy watching the youth play? I think they've done amazing. Um, take the pressure off them. I think if it went to the start of the season, would, 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 would anybody talk about the Arsenal getting top four? So let's just enjoy that. I, I would have been happy getting back into Europe, to be honest with you. If we do that, great. However, now, like you say, we should really be getting top four. Teams around us are just really inconsistent. And we're, the, we're consistent a lot at the moment. But... Above all, I'm just actually enjoying watching Arsenal more and more again nowadays. Uh, Saka, Smith Rowe, Odegaard, Ramsdale, Tierney, top players. Uh, but as you've just pointed out, we've got a Zaka in us who can, uh, who can really ruin things, getting a red card for silly things at the start of a, a Chelsea match, for example. Um, so, yeah, um, we should be getting top four. I don't think, um, I, I do think we're overachieving, sorry. Uh, What's acceptable though? Obviously, I, I think Arsenal are top runners for the top four. I think they are front runners, they're leaders. Is top six acceptable? Obviously, finishing eighth the last two seasons. Is seventh acceptable in the current position? No, not so. I think, I think for me personally, if you ask that question at the start of the season, top six would have been the aim. I don't think, I think <laughs> that's being completely honest. However, I think we don't get top four. That will be disappointing. Of course, what position we're in. I mean, it'd be pretty, pretty flaky, pretty spursy if we don't get top four um, at the position. But I have to, I have to nod, my, nod my, hat to, my hat to agents, to be honest with you. We're getting a bit emotional after the kind of time. I'm just enjoying it. And if we can get into that top six, I think that's fine for me. If we keep the youth, we strengthen the squad, that's OK. But will we do that? Um, I think Arteta's doing a good job after what he's done um, and, and sticking with the youth. They've done an amazing job. So I think top four would definitely be fantastic. I'd be over the moon. How, how long before they're not youth anymore, Alex? Obviously, they're all international players. How long before they become not youth and just this is Arsenal? Well, well, well but Smith Rowe's not, not playing international yet. I think. Yeah, he has. <sighs> Has he played? Has he played, played one one game? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I think if he, if he can get more caps under his belt, I think let's see where we are in two years. I mean, two seasons. If we consistently get in top four, I agree. Again, if we get top four and we get the Champions League, what are we going to be doing next year? Are we going to be able to battle on all fronts, or are we going to be trying to stay in the Champions League and then you know around mid table again? I don't know. Um, so. It, it, it's progress. I think just get progression, really. And then if we can get top four and stay up there, that's, that's fantastic. We're not far off Chelsea, but in my opinion, Chelsea, unfortunately, are light years away still. We're absolutely light years away. Um, so I think that's, 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 a, that's a great point to make, Alex, and I'm glad you've kind of uh, come to that conclusion because it is true. Arsenal getting into the top four is progression from where they were. And you can factor in all the stuff that we did factor in before, like Spurs having four managers in a year, Man United imploding completely yet again, and West Ham not bothering to sign players. But Arsenal are taking advantage of that. But they're still miles off Manchester City and Liverpool levels. So uh, do people really see the trajectory? Uh, this is where Arteta's taken Arsenal that within, what, I don't know, three, four years? Mm -hmm. It will be a three-horse race. It will be Arsenal with Liverpool and Manchester City going for the top, maybe even four if you if you want to include Chelsea in that. Uh, is that what people really Newcastle. think? Yeah, Newcastle. Yeah, got to factor that in as well. Um, Darren is an Arsenal fan. Hiya, Darren, you're on Talk Sport. Hello, mate. Yeah, I just wanted to touch base on all this fourth place stuff, right? At the beginning of the season, I'd have, I'd have said if we didn't get six, friend of mine spent 150 million, Arteta had to go. I said, back him. Um, he's trying to pull his big boy pants up now. He's had his FA Cup success. He's ups and downs. So 
spent a bit of money, as you said, to build a foundation of a, of, of a team uh, with youth and things like that. And, um, yeah, if we got a full spot, yeah, that'd be ideal. Uh, going into next season, uh, if that was the case, he'd have to pump another £150 million just to get out of the knockout, just to get out of the group stages. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, going forward on that side, Aubameyang was dead wood. He got a brand. He got a new contract, 150, 350 grand. Didn't, couldn't, couldn't score in a strip club. And now uh, he goes and plays for Barcelona for 95 grand a week. And he scored what six goals in five games. So um, he had to go. And it just goes to show the character of Arteta. Um, he's an intelligent man. I said back him. I'm willing to back him. Uh, but um, if he don't get top six, yeah, he's definitely uh, definitely question mark for me. I mean, I'm intrigued by that. Darren, thanks for that. I mean, I'm really intrigued. That shows the character of Arteta. Is it, I mean, would his judgment not be called into question? If, you know, he can't manage Aubameyang and then he goes off and starts scoring goals for Barcelona. Aubameyang's a, a strange situation. Yeah. We, we've seen this before when players get new contracts and then it doesn't work. It was it was strange. I just, I felt, I'm not an Arsenal supporter, of course, I'm Spurs, but to call him Deadwood, I think is a bit harsh because he has done a lot for the club, but obviously he was, had a terrible year. Mm, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan, uh, but I think to to say Arteta's character shows through there, and it's all positive, and then he goes st- scoring for Barcelona, and we haven't, Arsenal haven't got fourth place yet. We haven't finished the season yet, so I think you know everybody needs to just calm down a little bit. Uh, Griff as a gooner says, no matter what Arsenal do or don't do, you'll never have a good word for them. I tell you, if they go and win the title, then yeah, or if they get into the Champions League, they finish top four, and then they go and do something special in the Champions League next season, absolutely I'll say a good word about them. I think I've never said anything positive about Bukayo Saka. I've been wearing his T-shirt most of the season, for heaven's <laughs> sake. Get a grip, Griff.